Hey everyone, welcome to another video about Azure Event Hubs. Today we're going to be looking at competing consumers on Event Hubs. Did a video before about scaling applications on Service Bus with competing consumers. Today we're going to use that same application and show how that works when we use Event Hubs uh, and what the differences are between the way that we scale. So we'll dive into Visual Studio, we'll take a look at the code uh, and then we'll kind of explore that. Okay, so before jumping into Visual Studio, I'm just showing this video that I recorded before about scaling applications with competing consumers. What we're gonna see here is that I made this application where I could just type in up uh, and it would make a new receiver that would just pull from that same, that, that same topic and same subscription and the work would be divided between the two. They'd get different messages uh, and, we'd, and we'd, uh, we'd just see that no matter how many times I typed up, no matter how many times I, I kind of scaled up the application, uh, we would continue to kind of uh, see more and more things consuming messages. So if I jump a little bit further in, uh, we can see like we've got uh, four or five uh, different consumers running here. And so I've changed that code. Uh, I've got it open here. But I've changed it to work on event hubs. So I've got an event hub uh, connection here with an event hub name and then our default consumer group. And then I've got this producer, which every half second will send out a message to event hubs. Um, just recording an event and then I can type in up to make an, a new consuming application and down uh, to kill the, the last consuming application I made. So we scale up and down. Uh, and then if, if anything I type into the console as well, uh, will get added as a message uh, to the event hub. Um, if I type in lots of words, it will break them up into words and send them all together as a, uh, um, send them all individually actually, sorry, to event hubs, but with the same partition key. Whatever I type in will become the partition key. And then in this other application that gets started, I get an event hub consumer, um, which uh, basically just prints out the event hub message that I received, the event I received, and the partition that it came from. Uh, and so I'm also quickly gonna jump over to uh, our event hub itself. So I'll quickly pull this uh, browser window open. Um, and as we can see, I've got, uh, my event hub is YouTube demo, and I've got a demo event hub here. This one has two partition counts. Uh, sorry, two, yeah, two, it has a partition count of two. Uh, and then if we jump back, there's another one here, a demo event hub with four partitions. This one has four partitions. And so what I'm quickly gonna show is uh, in our code, if we just use, um, where are we in this program here, where we're sending messages. I'm gonna grab this. Uh, make it so we're just using demo event hub at first, which has two partitions, and I'm gonna start the application. Uh, why is that now complaining? Change that, I'll change the name space. Uh, I'll also say this one here says service bus on the top because I copied and pasted it. I'll quickly fix that. Event hubs demo. And we'll run that. And we should get two windows starting. We'll get a consuming application and a publishing application. Uh, they're not running because I've got them running already. There we go. So we've got uh, this is our processor that's going to receive message, and this is our sender that's going to send messages. Um, connected to this event hub. So we'll give it a second to start up. There we go. So we started to receive some messages now. Uh, what I can do is I can type up and start another consumer. And so what we started to see here, um, I kind of pause these by selecting them so we, we kind of freeze them for a second. This one started up and just started consuming from partition zero, and this one started up and started receiving from partition one. And that's kind of both partitions taken actually. So if I hit up and start another one, both our partitions have been allocated to a consumer. And so this one's actually gonna do nothing. There isn't a partition available that they can start reading from. So remember with Service Bus, when we have a subscription, it's like one queue with the message in it, and everybody just takes the one from the front of the queue. With event hubs, it isn't one subscription. It's always the topic, and the topic's divided into partitions. And so messages are just written to the partition, 
And all the consuming applications do is read one by one through them, remembering how far through that they went. They don't actually acknowledge individual messages. They just say, this is how far I got. And so we can't actually um, scale out past the number of partitions that we have. What I could do is kill this consuming application one. Uh, and then what will happen is periodically, Event Hub will check to make sure all the consumers are alive and rebalance the partitions. Um, so what will happen is when that uh, when that happens, it's going to notice that that one's no longer receiving messages. It's going to lose its kind of least of the partition and it'll get reallocated to an, to another uh, rebalanced across the current subscriber. So this one's already got a partition allocated to it. So this one will start to receive from, event, uh, from partition one. So what we'll see is when that timeout happens, it'll just start streaming messages in. And so... It, it isn't instantaneous the same way uh, service bus is reacting. We could scale up and down with service bus and it, it would make it, it make a difference immediately on the next message we receive. If I kill off now consumer zero, um, this one is still only receiving uh, messages um, in order because it's, it's from a partition and partition is kind of in order, uh, but I don't have every message here. I'm only receiving from partition one. And then eventually when that rebalancing happens again, it's going to notice that we've only got one consumer, so it's going to get allocated to both um, uh, both partitions. And so now we see it starting to, to pull from both of them. What we actually notice is it doesn't catch up partition zero. There are lots of messages coming out from zero, but the reason for that is there's lots waiting, and we're, we're, we were up to date on partition one, so there's nothing left to read, and so we fill that gap by reading lots from zero. Um, but actually it, it doesn't like catch all the way up. So now I'm reading in order. It, see, now I, I allowed partition one to kind of back up a little bit. We started to kind of take them in order. This is probably just a race condition for writing to the screen, which is why we don't get them perfectly in order. But we're now, we're now reading from kind of both of them, but we're not actually really doing it necessarily in the right order. We aren't, uh, actually now we've got to this point where we're up to date with both. We are effectively reading them in the right order, close enough. Uh, and then when I scale up again, add another consumer. I was actually apparently pretty close uh, to a rebalancing time there. So it rebalanced almost immediately. And now this one is doing zero and this one's doing one. And just to kind of show that it's definitely is about the partitions and the counts, I'm going to put in, I'm going to point this over to the, um, to the event hub that has four partitions. And then we'll, we'll start here, we'll start to see, which is obviously we're receiving from partitions one, two, three, uh, zero, one, two, and three. So there might have been leases uh, on here. So we've, we've now got one and three allocated to this here, but I can scale up uh, and start another one. That's taken on zero and two. I'll scale up again. This one's now, this one now owns two. Oh yeah, so I've got zero, this one's one and three, and this one's two. And if I scale up again, this one should eventually take over, this has taken over one, so this one here will now only write out uh, from three. And then one last time, scaling up, I'm gonna get my consumer that can do nothing, because all the partitions have been allocated, it's got nothing left to read. The, it is still beneficial when you when you build event hub applications, it is still beneficial to start more consumers than you have active partitions. So here I've got four partitions. Uh, I would probably say I wanna have five readers open. The reason being, one of them is effectively serving as a hot backup. It's ready, it's connected, and the next time there's a, a kind of leveling our rhythm run it, and, and one of these has died, it'll be ready there to help pick up the slack. Um, but you cannot infinitely scale readers from, from event hubs. And so it's really important when you, when you build your event hub infrastructure that you understand how you're going to scale there's a bunch of different ways that you can kind of work that stuff out. Uh, it might be that you produce 10 events a second and each event takes about a second to process whatever it is you're doing with it. In that case, you need at least 10 partitions in order that you can scale out to keep up with the events that you're producing. Uh, it might be that you, um, you uh, are sending orders in or, or, or something that's correlated to, to customers, at which point the customer ID will probably become the partition key uh, and then you don't necessarily um, 
you don't like you don't necessarily mind which partition customers end up on as long as all the ones for one customer end up on one partition or all the messages for another customer end up on another and then it's really thinking about how are you going to be able to scale it um what's important in terms of the kind of concurrency maybe it's the the, the downstream systems the things that your event consumers have to interact with what's their scaling capability so there's like different ways of, of thinking about it but you've got to be able to balance knowing how much you'll want to be able to scale with competing consumers in the future uh, versus how much uh, reliability you want on the message ordering as you consume, if you, if you have uh, different things consuming from the from different partitions. So there's there's some there's a lot of pre work to do with it, like a lot of thinking ahead, which on Service Plus you wouldn't necessarily have to do. But I thought I would show this demo uh, on the Event Hub instance because the fact that this process is sitting here doing nothing is kind of a big difference from the way uh, from the way Service Bus allows you to scale up. Uh, so hopefully you found that video useful. Uh, if you did. Feel free to hit like, hit subscribe on the channel if you want to see more content. Uh, if you really want to see it, hit turn on post notifications and you'll get notified when I post new videos. Uh, and you can always reach out to me on any of these kind of social channels uh, linked here on my page. Um, and then thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.